Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Big Apple Hockey. Uh, as usual, we always got a jam-packed show for you guys. Sorry, I am not exactly camera-ready today, although some people will tell me I only have a face for radio. I am your host, Mark Williams, and I'm joined by the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only, the good, bad, the ugly contributor, Mr. John Fulkowski. Speaking of ugly, I have a face that's only good for radio. <laughs> Oh, no, that's not true. That's not true. And, of course, fresh from peanut butter and jellies, Mr. Anthony LaRocco. <laughs> yeah, I make, I make about five per day. <laughs> One day there'll be a sitcom for you, Anthony, where it's it's I'm just a dad just yeah. trying to talk hockey occasionally <laughs> once in a while. But uh, as usual, like I said, we got a jam-packed show for you, for you all. Uh, again, we have our bar meetup coming up on the 28th. We're going to have giveaways that day, uh, giving away a couple autographed jerseys and 50-50 uh, raffles. Uh, and most importantly, just drinking and watching a hockey game together and seeing a couple names with faces. That would also be great. So first nice. things first, let's get it started with the roller coaster known as the New York Rangers. Yeah, that was almost as painful as actually watching those damn games. So, what, the me Rangers... punching myself in the face or being on that roller coaster? Because I think that's the only roller coaster that I ever would actually want to repeatedly punch my face on while riding. Yeah, that was a rough <laughs> game. Uh, well, I mean, those roller coasters are just, uh, just absolutely. I, I need to get on another roller coaster again. It's been a while. I don't think I've been on one in about five years. Uh, but so the Rangers lose first. We did last week's show where they lost the two goal lead and then lost to Vancouver in overtime more on Vancouver later. Uh, then a three goal lead lost to Edmonton in overtime. And then that awful six, nothing. Let's just get this road trip over game in Calgary. Uh, who, by the way, do you know who scored in that game? Mika Zibanejad. And I'm wearing this shirt right now. If you, if you like it. Contact Anthony because he's got more of these. So uh, his Twitter feed is always on there. That I do. So um, that's why I kind of I, I keep on saying, will the real New York Rangers please stand up? It's it's you don't even know what this team is doing minute by minute. Philk, I've talked too much. You got to go. Well, you were you were talking about Mika Zibanejad and wearing shirts. Uh, my shirt is for the Seattle-based Allison Chains, and their song "Down in a Hole" would really be fitting for the way that the Rangers were after those Edmonton and Calgary games, because boy, were were, were those games terrible. So yeah, uh, you 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 blow a four to one lead. And you watch the greatest player in the world right now, the most skilled player to ever play a game, basically dismantle four guys and a goaltender. Um, More on that in a moment. Yeah, uh, that, I mean, if you wanted to title it, it you could you could call it um, you could call it uh, guy fucks four dudes on the other team, and that would be like a Pornhub category. So yeah, it, it would sound like a Pornhub title or some shit. So yeah. That's basically how I know bad taste, but whatever, because it, it's basically true. Because Connor McDavid just basically did that and annihilated the Rangers in that one goal. But um, you basically gave up a four-one lead to a team. Alexander Georgiev, who looked like he played some of his better hockey in the first half of that game, gave up that bad goal to Jesse Pugliarvi. And listen, you could say, okay, it's a rifle. Yeah, I get it, but his angle was off. He let up the goal, and he was clearly rattled after that goal. And then the, the goals that followed, the four goals that followed that, were not good, except McDavid's. McDavid, it just – we'll get to that again in a bit. But defensive breakdowns left and right. Jacob Truba and Keandre Miller once again proving that they don't belong together. Patrick Nemeth needs to be fired into the sun by a cannon. Uh, and everybody else basically just fell apart on that team. And then in Calgary – um, if you saw my good, bad, and ugly, 
there was nothing good or bad about that game. Everything was ugly. Everything was uglier than me. That's saying a lot. Yeah. Uh, Not sure, especially since you lost all the weight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean the 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 Wayne ain't, the Wayne ain't hiding the face that only a mother could love. But um, I'm gonna tell you right now the way that they showed up in that game, and even the the whole thing with the Florida Panthers game afterwards, and how Igor didn't even come out for the number one star. I think that might be the goaltender sending a message to the team that their play just simply isn't good enough, and it hasn't been. Well, did, did you did you see the tweet on that today? They said that the reason why he left so hastily was he had the he had a little bit of a stomach bug. I don't buy that. I don't. You can say that all you want. I don't buy it. I, I think the goaltender's pissed. I think if he had, if he really had that much of a stomach bug, I, I think he wouldn't have been playing in that game. I, I, that's just yeah. me. But you, you can't keep overloading this guy with work, and that's what this team continues to do. And Gerard Gallant, yeah, I like what he said about how they didn't come out or they didn't play well enough, even against the uh, the best team in the league in Florida. You know what? That that's fine. But like Alexi Lafreniere came out what two weeks ago and said that, you know, I need to be better and this and that. Has Alexi Lafreniere walked the walk after talking the talk? Nope. He hasn't. And Gerard Gallant has got to be better. He's got to make these guys buy in. And if they're not going to buy in, changes are going to have to be made. Uh, this play's is unsustainable. And I don't want to hear it from the winners of the win, the sunshine and rainbows crowd when it comes to Rangers fans. Because if you guys want to overlook problems, and you're going to be the first ones to complain when they get knocked out of the playoffs so they don't make the playoffs, I'm going to look back at this and tell you, I told you so. And I don't want to be that guy, but this is the 2015-16 team all over again with a different composition because that's the way that they're playing back then, and it's the same exact way we're playing now. You just have have Igor instead of Hank. So help Igor out, somebody! All right. Uh, by the way, in case if anybody's wondering about the Calgary loss, the worst loss of franchise history was 15 to nothing to Detroit. So they've always put that in perspective on how bad those guys felt. But um, going very quick, and then I could get to Anthony because we still got a lot to cover just with the Rangers. Um, the uh, Then they come out, they beat Florida, who had, hadn't had a regulation loss yet. Then they, then they lost to New Jersey last night, too. Um, by the way, Spencer Knight, back-to-back games. Uh, what are you doing, Andrew Brunette? And it's you know, it, it's much as I was positive about, oh, they just beat Florida. Maybe they can get a couple things going. As if you read Filk's Good, Bad, and the Ugly, which is on our, um, our Facebook page, you can see th- there was a lot of ugly that's in there. And as long as – I think fans would be up in arms if it was – David Quinn giving David Quinn responses instead of Gerard Gallant with his coaching record and the on ice play. I mean, fans would be a little bit crazy, but Gallant is saying the right things behind the lines. And he's the man's won a Jack Adams award. He's coached a team to a Stanley Cup finals. I still believe in what he's, what he's going to do with this team. Eventually they're not there yet. We all know this. And that's absolutely true. Anthony, I'm going to go to you. So, I mean, when, in relation to the, the Panthers game, when I think about it, yeah, you know, you could be happy that you beat you beat the league's best team. But when you really break it down, I mean, they got outshot 45 to 18. I mean, that's – that's I would say eight out of ten times, eight out of ten times, if they, if they were to play a top team like that and the same thing happens with getting outshot 45 to 18, you're going to lose – like I said, maybe once or twice you squeak out a win like they did, but you're gonna lose. So yeah, you could be happy that you got the two points, but you gotta. That's it, simply unacceptable, and it's gonna burn, and it's gonna burn Igor out, because um, that that type of game. And it's sure, honestly, you could realistically say if there was there was about two minutes left in that game after they scored the third goal, the Panthers probably tie that game. So the Rangers escaped. Essentially, the clock ran out. Unfortunately for the Panthers, but well, because they don't make it a sixty-two minute game. Somebody, yes. <laughs> don't worry. Brian Boucher yeah. said the same thing last night. <laughs> um, you know why I was holding up six fingers? No, no, because that's how many shots they had in the second period. Six. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Six. And do you know how many goals they had in the second period? Two. Two. Yeah. So that means they scored on 33.3% of their chances in a period. Which you one of those up you talked about, the Kendra Miller uh, thing. Uh, do, Anthony, do you finish know up. what place the Rangers are in in the NHL in high danger scoring chances for? I guess last? 31st. Yep. Do you yeah. know oh. what place they're in in the NHL in high danger scoring chances against? 31st? No. 29th. Ugh. So they're the second worst team in the league in high danger chances for the, the fourth worst team in the league in high danger tr- scoring chances against. You cannot win with this formula. Something's got to change. They have to buy in. It, 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 if it's not going to change, personnel has to be changed up because you're not you're not getting rid of a, a first year coach like Galan. You're not doing it. This isn't Florida before their their current ownership. This isn't Vegas with a brand new ownership group that's never really dealt with hockey before. Start buying in. These guys have got to be better. It's it, it's enough. It's a friggin' joke. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of watching it. I'm tired of the people that are telling me that I'm negative because, oh, you're not sunshine and rainbows. Oh, you're not the one that's happy about a win. You can't be happy even if they win. Oh, well, they just beat the best team in the league. Why aren't you happy? Well, let's see, Schiffer Brains. I'm not happy because my team is getting handily outplayed every damn game. And they're coming out with victories by the skin of their teeth. And by the skin of their teeth, I mean the skin of their teeth. I mean it literally. I don't care if it's an expression. I mean it literally. It it doesn't matter what, like they say, oh, how many is really the question, not how. Okay, fair. But when it comes down to playoff time, when it comes down to that stretch, like it did last year, where they played against the Islanders, and the Islanders smacked the friggin' shit out of them. And then Boston smacked the shit out of them. Pittsburgh smacked the shit out of them. And they missed the playoffs. What are you going to say then? Huh? What are you going to say then? Well, what are you going to say, Anthony? <laughs> I mean, I, I I, mean, I agree with, with a lot of what Philk is saying. I mean, I think too many people look at the overall record and they're content, but if, if you look at the way they've been getting wins, um, it's it's not it's not good for lo- for for long term you know long term success here. Um, you know my my concern is again with allowing Shesterkin to get peppered for more often than not, um, and then you know I look at their I look at their defensive play, and they're too loose. I mean if you, if you break let's let's just break it down here. I mean Patrick Nemeth, terrible defenseman. Oh Tenorti. God. Tenorti, terrible defenseman. Um, Keandre Miller, I know he scored that beautiful goal, but he's not he's not playing well defensively. Jacob Truba resembles a traffic cone right now. Um, you know, Niels Lundqvist, he's young. He's got a lot of upside, but you could tell he's still learning. You know, so who does that leave him with? With with Lindgren and Adam Fox? No, I mean, you're, and you're, you got to play them like every minute you're, now. You're not you're not you're not going to win when you have when you have essentially two capable defensive guys playing defense. And then the other hand of it, you know, I know Kako missed some time, but he's, he's got, he's got a bagel on the air in points. He doesn't yeah. Have well, he would have had one if Ryan Strom didn't decide, Hey, well, yeah. why don't I just skate into the goalie crease and stay there? Yeah. No, you know what? No, that's one of the dumbest offensive plays I've seen from a guy. I get it. I get it. But that's BS because he tried to get out of there and he wasn't allowed out. You kept uh, getting cross checked. But he still skated game. right into the crease. You don't skate to the goal line when the puck is behind the goal. Go I to the top it. of the crease. I get it, but the, he still has to be allowed out of the crease. If that, all right. So he skated into the crease before that was before, well before the shot was taken. <clears throat> if Ekblad, if he Ekblad doesn't stop cross checking him and he's allowed to leave that crease, that shot gets off, and he's out of the crease by the time that that shot is taken and goes in. And that's a goal. All right. Well, we're up to about 15 minutes on this. We got two other headlines we have to talk about with this. Anthony, finish up your thoughts. Um, So, yeah, Kako not having a points concerning. And then, you know, um, Lafreniere still. I mean, he's like four points in the season. 
And three of them were goals. I mean, it's still you 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 need you need more from those two. You you absolutely need more from those two uh, yep. because you can't. I mean, Kreider scoring goals, yes, and then you have Panarin and Zibanejad, but that's just too much. That you know, it's too much pressure for for three guys to carry. Um, yeah, we and you know, like speaking of even, Chris Kreider, sorry, uh, so I was going to say speaking even, of Chris Kreider, you know, even even Heedle has three or four points in you know thirteen games, and that's not. That that's that's not good enough. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're if you look at on paper right now and their record, it's it's good, but there's a lot of underlying things going on that's not sustainable for for the long term success. And um, you know they they have to figure it out. Minus four goal differential. That's one of those things. You got to change that. Can't you can't be can't be doing that. And that's even after they had. Uh, a positive one as of last week. Um, if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hmm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.